Now, it's only the slides that are being recorded, so Lee's doing that for us. Just like to introduce a few people. You know most of you know each other anyway, but Rosie over here, who's, um, and Shane from our faculty STEM office, admin support team extraordinaire, David Patterson, Associate Professor David Patterson as um, Academic Program Director. You know me, Kathy Mann, Course Coordinator, and Lee from the um, Academic Program staff and also with Inspire, so all the help. I'd like to begin formally by acknowledging the Ngunnawal people, the traditional custodians and the land on which we meet right now, but also you've been learning for the last couple of years, three years, three and a half years, one and a half years for the grad entries, um, and pay my respects to the elders past and present. Um, the picture I've used in the middle is a metaphor many of you have seen from um, times when I've taught you, but um, it demonstrates that connection, the hub in the middle, that community in the middle, the meeting place, the journeys uh, to get there, to go away, all those kinds of things. So the common thread here is about your journey with us at UC, that intellectual journey, the professional journey. And as you start to think about you know, the end of your semester, the end of the year, and the end of your degree, it's about course completion time. And so this journey has been uh, maybe smooth for most, hopefully, a little rocky for others, but the notion of the journey is really important. Um, and important to us, to me in my role as course coordinator, but to all of us in the background here as we support you through that. And I appreciate that at this time when we're transitioning with new degrees coming on board last year, and you're in the, you're the last cohort of the old degrees, affectionately known as the old degrees. But you're young and shiny and new. So the notion when I talk about old degrees, I'm just saying the degrees that finish their accreditation period with um, uh, of our jurisdictions, so this one's, um, all your degrees are accredited with New South Wales, um, but TQI and the ACT jurisdic jurisdiction also accredit and acknowledge it. So it's that end point that I'm talking about when I say old. Um, so the purpose of today is to introduce the support team. You will have, this sort of slide you would have seen at O Week when you first started, three and a half years ago, or one and a half years ago. Maybe not at all, Tim. <laughs> That's okay. But these are some of the faces that you um, hopefully know and love, maybe. Anyway, move on. <laughs> yeah, well, except you. <laughs> That's all right. But anyway, um, the point of today is to talk about the last, the, the homeward journey, I suppose, you know, the, the, the final leg of the journey. Um, and so if you're in... Uh, any of those degrees that you see on the screen here? Um, most of you, I know some of you are in... Anybody in the BTeach? Yep, one BTeach person, thank you. Um, most of you will be in the B.Ed. B.Arts um, and the Bachelor of Education grad entry. So that's Saj, Katrina, and I must have left a course code off. Okay, sorry. Um, but any of the grad entries. <laughs> Um, we've got quite a lot of degrees going on, and the Bachelor of Education um, and Bachelor of Asia Pacific, anybody from that one? But anyway, if you are listening to this, because this is also being recorded, so we can put it on the All Teacher Education Moodle site. So if you'd like to recap anything, or if you're listening in Radio Land, you can catch it on the, that Moodle site. Um, so the purpose is to talk about, uh, I guess, the, the functional things about course completion and what that means. And these are some of the functional stuff that, um, as course coordinator, I help you with. Um, but the admin, the whole team, will help with along the way as well. There are things that um, you need to be very mindful of as you progress through the last few units that you study with us on your last placement, um, some of the processes that go on and some of, when, some of I guess, hurdles that you may encounter um, as you come towards course completion. But certainly the nature of our old degrees, they have a shelf life. So it has a best before date and that's going to be December this year. So that's with our registering, that's as long as it's accredited for as it stands by itself now. So under those rules of, that, of the courses that you're in now, they're the rules that you'll be matched against when you come for course completion. And student progress and graduation are the group, the organisation within UC, the admin team, who check off, I guess, match your transcript with um, what the course requirements are for your degree and make sure that you've got everything from all the credit points you need to finish and that you've achieved the right subjects or the right units. Um, or if you haven't done the same units as on the list, 
that you've got background approval from one of the program directors or course convener or somebody at the time for that approval to happen. So that's what we're in the background doing as well. Um, so I want to talk about um, things like unit availability, the rationale for why some of the units that you may be on your list for your degree may not be on offer this year and what replacement stuff we might be able to do and what process you would go through to make sure that that is recorded properly. Um, um, yeah, so some of the rationale and some of the solutions. Now, the rationale is that we do actually have um, the nature of you know, teaching out the old and in the new. So we've got the new degrees and we've got quite a suite of new degrees. They started last year. Yours, your suite of degrees and the primary ones as well, they finish at the end of this year. So the staff have been doing a balancing act between the old and the new. Now we can't do offer everything all the time, so we've made a few selections. But there's quite a lot of easy matches that can be made for things if they're units, if they're not available to you, that I can help with organising. For those in the joint degrees, that gets a little bit um, individual, so we need to see. And many of you have seen me for course advice for that individual matchmaking service. Um, many of you are doing cross-institutional studies as well for one of your teaching areas or both. Um, so that's fine. So we have a matchmaking service we do there as well. If you're doing um, open university studies, that's all cross-institutional. So there's quite a lot of difference in the secondary joint degrees if you're in those. Um, and I've put up here just an example of um, three of the most common um, situations that you might find yourself in or just examples, I guess. Um, in the old degree, some of you, many of you have had restricted choice units or open electives if you're in the arts degrees, all sorts of things like that. Um, sometimes with our old degrees, we've got a unit, co a unit that's actually almost exactly the same in the new degree. So it's quite an easy match to me to make. Um, but the unit code is different. So you find you won't be able to enrol into this one, Adolescent Health Issues, with 8694, because it's not available. But what is available is the replacement, 9856, Adolescent Health Issues. Very conveniently named the same thing. But it's the code that means, that enables you to enrol in it. So you need to know that. Um, promoting health and wellbeing is now called health and wellbeing. Some slight adjustments, but the code is different. So if you're doing health and PE, for example, this makes a difference. Or if you're able to choose an open elective in a B.Ed. B.Arts, this will make a difference. Um, the TESOL, teaching um, English to students from other languages, speakers of other languages, sorry, um, that's not available at all. Um, but from that suite of the minor in TESOL, sorry, that replacement, that column actually, Heather just goes with that one. Um, there are a suite of, you know, three options for semester two that you can choose from. So wherever there's an unavailability, I'll be able to, with, in consultation with you, work out a best fit replacement. But it does require um, usually an appointment for which you email the STEM office and they'll book you in with something there to, uh, to suit. Um, you know, if it's winter term, it'd be good to do that as soon as possible. For semester two, um, you know, do it by the end of the semester one would be great. Um, but, you know, this matchmaking thing with unit availability is inevitable. Um, but it does need a bit of time and some consultation would be good. Is that all right so far? Okay. Um, in terms of the winter term units, I've um, collected here um, a grouping of units that are secondary specific from the old degree and the new degree. So you were able to take um, units from the new degree as well, so long as they match the academic content, level of study, um, learning outcomes, we make a whole lot of um, best fit judgments there and that's where my academic layer comes into play. Um, but for here, this is what the faculty is offering in terms of the education units for this winter. Um, so if you have any issues with what's available, what you might need to do, that's best to come and see me. Um, the old units that you'll be familiar with titles, up to LAD there and up, those five, top five are old units and the bottom six are new ones. Now, particularly for the design and technology people, this is the only one that specifically relates to design and technology. It's really important when it comes to this homeward stretch because that's what we're doing. There's lots of, in this journey towards your um, course completion, graduation is kind of the, the figurehead experience that we all think about. We think about the end of our degree. We think about your nodding years. Uh, we think about the celebration at the end at Parliament House and we throw our mortarboards in the air and you go and have a glass of champagne and that's great. 
There's a little bit that happens before that graduation ceremony. Very key thing called course completion. And that's what we have to aim for is course completion. Um, so it's very important for that time point, which is towards the end of December. So before you get to that, you need to tidy up, do a bit of housekeeping on your studies. So you can have a look on your transcript and you can see if you've got anything withheld, anything that requires you to, um, I think it's an, is it an NAS grade for cross-institutional yeah. studies? Yeah. If you haven't actually submitted, if you're doing cross-institutional studies for any reason or overseas stuff, if you haven't submitted that uh, transcript from that institution to say that you have completed those units successfully, um, if you haven't submitted that to Student Central, you need to do that as soon as possible um, so that it can be recorded on your transcript and the check-off for student for course completion can be done easily and efficiently. In semester two, if you're doing that, Rosie, the so, okay, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Just, I'll come to you. It's all right. You can just put it here. I'll hold on to it. So that question was, when it comes to course completion, um, when is the cutoff that you have to have your cross institutional results, which is particularly um, for that double in Bachelor of Ed, Bachelor of Arts? I believe most of that's that's that area for students to get that cross institutional in. Um, it also relates to anyone who's um, on placement in their last semester needing to get their prac report in to actually amend that grade to the final result. Um, now, if you're completing and planning to attend the October graduation ceremony, so that 